Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Ledette. I'm an associate professor of disease ecology and epidemiology. If we can learn more about the tick, that will help everyone prevent themselves from suffering from a tick-borne disease. So in, important to, the, to, to Lyme disease and that wild cycle, the enzootic cycle, or that cycle that doesn't involve humans, that involves wild animals and ticks. Ticks have multiple life stages, uh, larva, nymphs, adults, and eggs. Um, now, those are different sizes. The larval ticks are very small. We often hear about seed ticks. Um, nymphal ticks are the size of a poppy seed. Um, and then adult ticks are much larger, and that's why they're, they're easier to see when you get those, those ticks on you. Now, this black-legged tick or deer tick, exodes scapularis, whatever you want to call it, is associated with deer. And I get the question a lot, well, I tell people, I tell folks, deer don't become infected with Lyme disease. If they did, we'd have a huge problem because you got these really large reservoirs or vending machines of Lyme disease out there uh, feeding all these ticks. Well, then why deer? Why do we hear so much about deer? Well, remember going back, these ticks are different sizes. The smaller ticks, the baby ticks, the larva tick, the teen ticks, the nymphal ticks, they feed on smaller animals. The adult ticks don't. You will not find an adult tick on a mouse, no matter how hard you try. Um, trust me, I've done it. I've never seen an adult black-legged tick on a mouse. The adult black-legged ticks feed on medium to larger sized animals. That's why deer are so important. Without a larger blood meal, the adult ticks would not have a meal, would not be able to lay eggs, no baby ticks, no cycle. That cycle will be broken. So part of the idea of controlling tick populations is removing their meal. The deer are huge and there's also alternative sources, but that is one part of the way we can come at tick and tick-borne diseases, including Lyme disease.